Let's go over here now. Now, it bears some similarities, doesn't it? For example, what are the intercepts? Now, there are two reasons for that. You should draw them in. The first reason is, the same thing is happening over here. There are two numbers and only two numbers whose squares are themselves. And they are 0 and 1. Okay? But the other thing is that um, the square root of x and x squared, these two themselves have a relationship with each other. What do we call these guys? It starts with an I. Wow. <laughs> Any word that starts with I in maths. Okay. These are inverses of each other, are they not? Okay, inverses, right? I had, I, had, I had two letters, yeah. I gave you one of them. Anyway, um, they're inverse functions, um, and that means that you're reflecting across this y equals x line, right? So therefore, your points of intersection will stay the same because they are on the reflection line, okay? What else do you notice about it? It includes the negative values. Okay, so the negative values are fine. You can square negative values, it's all good. But something happens to the negative values when you square them, right? What happens to them? Where have they gone? Yeah, they've come up to the top because, of course, uh, when you square all those values in the real world, are going to be positive. So that's why we have that guy up there. One last thing I want us to notice. Uh, here, we said if you have a value, in fact, this is probably worth writing down, right? For 0 is less than x is less than 1, is less than one right? The square root of x is going to be bigger than x. Do you agree with that? Whereas for x is greater than 1, the square root of x is less than, it's smaller. Right? Okay, what about over here? How can we explain what's going on from 0 to 1? Square root of x is less than x. Very good. x squared is less than x because you square a number that's little and it gets more little, right? That's the technical term. Colloquially, I suppose, if you square a fraction, like, like a quarter or an eighth or 0.2 or something like that, then yes, it will get smaller. Whereas, if you take a big number, right, then when you square it, of course, you're going to get something larger. Okay? Now, these don't just apply to x. These apply to any functions that you square or take the square root of. So, for example, if I say instead of this, right, if uh, my function, right, whatever that happens to be, is less than 1, right, then the square root of that function will be bigger than the function. Do you see that? So this is just staying generally here, what we're looking at for y equals x. And in the same way, when a function, oops, wrong way, wrong domain, when the function values are above 1, you take the square root, and you'll be less than the original function. Yeah? Um, why is it that in the uh, root x and x squared graphs, we're looking at the um, the x values as in 0, x, and 1, and mm, yep. whereas technically yep. f of x is y? Yes, that's a great question. And the reason why is because you're not actually looking at the x values. This is f of x, right? This is f of x, which is y. It's just, I've just relabeled it, right? Uh, y equals f of x. So in fact, this is another way of saying y versus the other y, but rather than saying the other y, I'll just tell them what the labels are, okay? Uh, and in the same way, over here, I can say, if your function is between 0 and 1, then if you square that function, square it, then it's going to be less. Right? Does that make sense? Whereas if your function is bigger than 1, if you square that function, well, of course, you expect things to get bigger when you square them if they're big numbers. 